Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for the last day of July, July 31st, 2013. I'm Matt Gradwall from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find my website at uppercutwoodworks.com and you can find me on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. If you're watching the video and you want to participate in the text chat, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room and log in with your Twitter handle or just follow the hashtag woodchat on Twitter. Tonight we're going to continue the telephone game design challenge with the table and to kick us off, um, let's introduce Scott Meek. Hey, Scott. Howdy, howdy. Where Scott can we find you? ScottMeekWoodworks.com and SMeekWoodworks on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, um, we also have our other regular, Chris Wong, and he has introductions for the other guys that are joining us. All right, uh, Chris Wong here from Port Moody, B.C., where it is sunny and nice out right now. Um, you can find me, my, my website is flairwoodworks.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Flair Woodworks. Now, we have two special guests here today. One of them, Brian Van Breedy, who's the, our latest participant in the telephone design, telephone game design experiment. That's a mouthful. And as of 1.18 this morning, a new 50, dad. 158, yeah. 150, 158, okay. Really? How are you doing, Brian? Yeah. Congrats, Brian. Thank you, thank you. Have you, Very sleep? Have you had some sleep since then? Uh, like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, <laughs> all right. So um, where can people find you on the internet or Twitter? Or uh, If they're going to go Twitter, it's BC Craftmaster, and if they're going to go Facebook, it's uh, Bucks County Craftmasters. All right. So that's where they can find me. And our other guest tonight is Justin uh, Lieb. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's good. All right. Now, where can we follow your adventures? Oh, I am uh, curiously named uh, Half Blind Woodworker at blo dot blogspot dot com. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter, uh, at Half Blind WW. There you go. So, Justin. On the second half of the show, we'll talk to us about uh, his Rubo bench that he built and also a massive 1,200-pound Rubo bench, which was built in the same, at the same time, um, quite the undertaking. It must be some kind of record, um, but we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, Matt, shall we start off with the design game? Yeah, let's do the design game. Okay. Because Brian so, went all crazy on us. Yes. Excellent. So I haven't the, seen it yet. I, didn't, I missed it when you guys were showing it. Uh, so. Yes. Yeah. Scott was busy uh, doing a glue up before we started here. Yeah. And West System Epoxy is really sticky. Uh, yeah, it's hands slippery are sticky. than sticky. <laughs> yes. I think Chris stuck his hands together once with that, right, Chris? Uh, CA glue it was, which is oh, uh, a glue. bit faster curing. Uh, West Systems it takes a long time to cure, so it'd be yeah. take a lot of work to get your hands actually stuck together. Um, yeah. It's just. It's it's on my hands, and they're not necessarily not drying together, but it's just like they feel gummy. Yes, that's a good word. So, so my shop smells like mineral spirits. Okay, so Chris, do we have an um, do we have uh, an update to your site that shows the design that I can point people to? Yes, um, I've updated the page, and I'll show you it right here. So at flarewoodworks.com, and there's a link in the menu here for telephone game. That'll take you to a page where you can see all the designs, starting with this really angular blocky thing that I did. And then it went on to Matt's design and Bit Covered, Scott Meek, onto Greg Palmer and Megan Fitzpatrick. Last week we had Diami Plotki and his very curvy design, and now we have Brian Van Vredi's design here. So I'm going to go to a, a bigger picture here. So you know, Brian can tell us about the changes. And if you have any questions, drop them into the Twitter chat room. Just use hashtag woodchat, and we'll ask Brian your questions. So Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about what brought you here? Uh, you're trying to audio cut on my end. Audio, yeah. Now you're a little bit better. You were in a, you were in a mixtape there for a second. Yeah. Uh, so, 
doing the Mr. Roboto. <laughs> so last week, uh, our biggest problem with that table was trying to figure out how to make that uh, that radius on the inside from the upper level down to the lower level. And last week, I was thinking about it. Why not just get rid of it? That would be my how I would change it. I would just completely get rid of it and make two different levels so that you would have a separate tier so you could maybe put your electronics up on the top section and you would put your paperwork or your drafting materials down on the lower section. So I'm definitely assuming that this is a desk and nothing but a desk. No drawers. Uh, maybe someone down the road will add drawers to it, but that that's how I was envisioning it. Kind of like a table within a table. Um, and the only way that lower table is connected is to the stretchers at the lower end. Mm -hmm. so it's not connected to the top of, like, the top tier. It's only connected to the lower stretchers. I, I, th I think you said, Brian, at one time, it's a table within a table. Yeah. Mm hmm So it, I'm, I'm guessing we have two side stretchers and one back stretcher, right? Nothing in the front. Correct. Cool. What's your impression, Scott? It's wild. <laughs> Isn't it? I wish I could what? render it. I think am I the first person to draw it? No, no you're like the third. Paper or someone else yeah. draw a pencil paper. Yeah. Diami did pencil. Diami did pencil, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I I want to see it in a three D space. Because from an angle it would probably look uh the way that lower table sits, I think would look really cool because from yeah. the side view and from the front view it looks like it looks like those vertical legs, I guess you want to call them, that go down to the stretchers. It looks like they're straight, but they're not. They're really either bent lambs or they're sculpted out of a single piece of wood. So if you yeah. saw it from an angle, it would look like it was going in all three dimensions. Oh, that's right, because mm -hmm. the ones that look straight from the side are curving towards you, and the ones that look yeah. straight yeah. from the back are curving towards you, but, the one, yeah. but then the ones from the side are curving away. Correct. Uh yeah, <laughs> you melted my you melted my brain a little bit. <laughs> so the um, from the front view, the the arched stretcher at the bottom is not fully at the back, but it's at the same point that those. Uh, oh. No, it's fully at the back. Is it fully at the back? Or is it? Okay. So where? Okay. Did, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the 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 side pieces that come down to the side stretcher. They come to the side stretcher, not the back stretcher. Uh, correct. The ones, the yeah. ones, yes, from the side view, the ones that look like they curve from the side view go to the back stretcher, and the yeah, ones that come okay. vertically down go to the side stretcher. I was looking at it. The side view, I was looking at it backwards. Okay. So, okay. so everything's kind of yeah. pinched inwards. Yeah. Well, I'm so tempted to pull up uh, sketch up right now and just see if I can quickly render this. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you to that any, anyhow, Scott. Then we can have another uh, peripheral view, um, peripheral, not peripheral, um, perspective view. I would love to see a corner view of this, yeah. A corner view would be cool. Yeah. Corner go view ahead, would be very cool. Go ahead and build one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you have, you have all the time in the world now, Brian. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah all those I got, rock, I got that rocking chair I still have to finish up. You'll, you'll be up late at night, I'll tell you that. You'll get a lot of work done at night. No, my shop's uh, 15 miles from my house, so oh. 10 miles. You can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> First, build a new shop. Yeah. Next week, yeah. house, and then build the table. Yeah. And we want it by next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't be well, sleeping anyway, so yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, your design definitely solves that issue of how do you make that split level top. And I, I was waiting for someone to do something like this just to make it kind of eliminate that question of how to do it. And this is exactly what you've done, I think. I really like that aspect of it, though, the, mm -hmm. the two different levels on the desk. So the front and back legs, I've got SketchUp up, open right now. The, uh, <laughs> the front and back legs... Um, Kind of have a compound uh, curve to them, correct? Yeah. Right. So if that was going to be hit from a single piece of uh, 
mm. wood, it would have to be like a four by four or a six by six post. Right. Mm. And you'd have to bandsaw in one direction, tape it back together, yeah. and then bandsaw in the other direction. <laughs> Right. Got a All question right. from the chat room for you, Brian. How do the interior table front legs, okay. if that makes sense, connect to so, the other structure? So how would I mount them into the lower stretchers? Basically, all the way, all four uh, of them. Mm. For for joinery, I guess is what he's is what Adam's asking. Mm -hmm. So it'd probably have to be some sort of drawboard, mortise and tenon joint there. How about some angle brackets? No, nah, it's got to be all out of wood, right? I, I hear laughing in the background. I'm, I'm just just a bunch of drywall screws, screws maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Duct tape in there. But, uh, yeah, drawboard mortise and tenons should hold it. I mean, the four of them together should, should be very strong. Mm -hmm. it, it looks a little thin there, but I think it would be a little bit bulkier. And then it would have to get sculpted back, or I think I have it drawn as like an inch, an inch and a half thick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it probably would have to be more like two inches, and then sculpted back in certain sections to look to make it look thinner, but still be as thick as it needed to be. What's your scale on this? Like, what what is one square? Do you, do you have a scale? Uh, so. Well, we, I guess three inches maybe, so well, it, that'd make like, it about thirty inches tall. I have it at twenty-four. Well, the I mean, you can see the square. So every every four squares on the graph paper is a foot. Ah. So it's thirty good, inches, good it's like thirty-three inches, thirty-two inches tall. Okay. Um, two, I don't know what's, here. what's what's the standard height of a desk. Uh, twenty twenty-nine. 20, no. So that would make your writing surface right about 29, and then your top level 32 or something, like you said. I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plot your points and draw your curve, right? Yeah, basically. Um, going back to the legs, you're saying you'd have to cut them by a six, from a 6x6 six six or something? Well, if you were going to cut them from a single post, it would probably yeah. have to be a 6x6 six six or a... But it's just a single curve. If you... You could cut the cur cut the leg, I think, from a from an eight quarter board and then rotate it approximately forty five degrees. Could you not? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. And uh, the other getting question, all, getting all practical on us. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> well, not everybody has a whole lot of six by six material and mahogany in their shop. No, I, I've never seen it. Yeah. Um, Adam Adam was asking if the top feels too thin, um, especially over the long span over the back on the top level. And, and as far as strength goes, I think that's dependent on the materials. But um, I mean, it's I have also a, a visual thing. It's like one and a half inches there, I think. Okay. It's, a, it's probably about one, between one and a quarter and one and a half how I have it drawn. Okay, and that would make your table legs how thick? Two About inches. Two and a half? Yeah, okay. two, two and a half. Okay. So maybe not entirely to scale because it is a hand drawing. Correct. But, uh, yeah, you do get the idea uh, across very well. Hmm. This is basically uh, how I do all of my work. It's basically pretty rough yeah. and... When I go to build, I just you just oversize yeah. everything, and then you yeah. just take it back. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it can't hurt to sculpt it back. It might take a little bit longer, but you you get to work to where it visually is appealing to the eye, and uh, I've really found that that's that's easiest for me to do things that way. If you try and go right to where you need to be the first time, yeah. you're screwing yourself. Hmm. So this is going to be very difficult for me. Very difficult to what? It's it's very. I'm trying to figure out how to draw this in SketchUp. These legs. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, Jeremy suggested. That's why I would probably just start with uh, the six by six posts and then <laughs> make the connections and then cut it away. Yeah. 
Um, Jeremy Morgan suggested uh, bent laminations for the legs too, and that's of course another option for steam bending as well. I would go bent lamb if I was going to yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't allow some. You didn't put some curves in the bottom of the. I don't. Know, I guess the uprights that connect the top to the stretchers, something to make it flow into the other parts, like a like a Maloof chair, like the legs would flow into the a rocker or something. Where is is your cursor right over top where you're talking about? Yeah, right, right in here. I'm I'm surprised you didn't flow those together there with a bit of a curve or something. To so, sort of make them a count compound angle as well. You're saying? Um, not necessarily a compound angle, but just to sculpt it to get it to flow into. Okay. Be, uh, like a hard T. No, I would agree with that. So probably when I, if I was constructing that, that's something that I would make. Over, like right. as I was saying, everything would be oversized, and then right. it would. You yeah. just take it back until it looks right. Mm -hmm. So lo looking at the top, we've we've paid attention to the front and the side a lot, but looking at the top view, I see you've also added curves to the profiles here, which is a nice touch. And I actually had more curves. I had curves on the far outside edges as well. Oh, okay. But uh, I got rid of them. It looked it it looked like too much. Okay, that was my next question because it seems I don't know. I th I think I'd like to see those curves there as well. I don't. Know. What does everyone else think? Adam mentions he was, he sees a lot of steaming for this project. Yeah, is that of your of your brain or of the wood? <laughs> Probably both. Probably a little bit both. So do you guys Justin, think, okay. do you think the lower table would hold with four legs coming up like that? That would be... I, I do. Well, I think we locked up Ryan there. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any issue... Um, I, th I think that's definitely possible. Um, those would be maybe through tenons uh, wedged, like like um, a chair making style. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying. Um, they'd go all the way through, and then on the on the side they escape. You'd wedge them in and cut them flush. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, po possibly. Um, I'd wedge the tenons in in the top of the tabletop and, um, yeah, drawboard or through wedge tenons for where they meet the stretchers. I think. Okay. Now, this these are front left and front right uprights that connect the tabletop, the lower tabletop. They intersect with the leg at the same point that the stretcher does. Is that correct? I'm looking at my drawing here. Mm -hmm. No, nothing. Nothing hits in the corner. Okay. All right. Because so that, that simplifies construction then. Well, yeah, if where your cursor is. If you look at the the profile, uh, the front view. Yep. Uh, you can see that they go straight down, straight in. Okay. They don't go into okay, the corner. Okay, sure, sure. It looks okay. like they go into the corner, but they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I gotta get a 3D model of this, baby. Yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> Scott, you got five minutes. <laughs> right, how about half, half an hour. <laughs> okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Brian? Yeah, I think I think I, I like the design. I think my only concern is um, if you look at the distance. Um, between the upper section, your lower sections only. It, I, I just don't know if it's wide enough. Um, um, the the space for for the work surface. Yeah, the space for the work surface. I don't know if it's wide enough, given that the um, the upper section is gonna is gonna uh, block you. And I also don't know if it's deep enough. It looks like it's only gonna be 12, 18 inches, eighteen inches deep. That's pretty good yeah. for a desk, I think. But um, and then I also wonder how much I'm trying to figure this out. How much room you're gonna have for your legs in your chair? Yeah. Uh, underneath I, there. 
I, I don't see an issue with that there. It should go all the way to the back. Yeah. You should be able to put your feet up on that back stretcher. Right, but how how wide of a space is there underneath there for your chair? Is it... Um, oh, it's the whole one foot, two feet, almost three feet there, Matt. Yeah. From, I, from okay. here to here, it's almost three feet. Uh, oh, you're saying for pulling something with arms, like, a, like an actual desk chair. Yeah, like my office desk gotcha. chair that has arms. Okay. I just don't know if I'm going to be hitting those uh, interior legs. I see what you're saying, yeah. Right. Well, you know uh, what, Matt? What's that? If you ask Brian to make this table for you, he'll probably charge you $10,000, and you'll be careful not to hit the legs. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what you do, yeah. You tell the user they're using it wrong. Yeah, that's, what, that's right. Charge them, for, charge them a lot for something and tell them they're using it wrong. Well, yeah, they'll be more careful the more you charge them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, Brian, did you consider just having four legs on two tops and having the interior lower top? Um, I did. Connect okay. right into it so that it would the lower top would kind of uh, just sit into those four legs and go all the way out to the sides? Yeah. I was thinking about that, and then... I think that would be much less visually interesting and more, much more utilitarian. Uh, yeah. So. So basically, I think I would make this out of two completely different. I would literally make it look like a table within a table and make the two tables different woods. Yeah, I think design success on this would be if people try and pull them apart. Right. If people try and separate them like those nesting tables. Yeah. <laughs> then you know you've achieved the visual effect that you're looking for. Right. Do you think that the the upper section would interfere with like your elbows if you were if you were tucked into the desk? So that's exactly what I'm. That's exactly. Yes. What I'm I, I, Let's look at yeah. look at how I'm like. Yeah. My mouse, like my keyboard's. Oh, hold on, sir. I'm wondering right now about suspending the desktop, making that structure that you have come up, which comes up to support the desk, actually come down from the top to support the desk. So my keyboard and mouse themselves are 24 inches wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could see, I could see feeling crowded. I'm a I'm a wide guy, front to back and left to right. I'm not very high, so <laughs> I could just see myself like feeling constricted a little bit. You're looking at, at the very middle of where the uh, the two convex section hits. You're looking at 39 inches between there, roughly, and about 36 inches at the very front where it pinches in. Oh, so I've got there's three feet. That's what it looks like from my drawing. Yeah, yeah. there's three yeah. feet. Okay, yeah. then I'm much less worried about it. Okay. Because let's see, I'm. Well, let's see. Let me go. From there to there. Yeah, it's close. So It's close, but I think it might work. I'll tell you what I would like to add to this right now, and that's some secretary drawers underneath that top section. If you put some little drawers in Ooh. between those two levels at the back, maybe, and that's where okay. you put your drawers instead of putting them underneath the lower table. Okay. I'm trying to think of where yeah. you would put drawers on this table. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's so a the, desk. That would also. A desk has yeah, that, drawers, right? Kind of like letter letter drawers or something. Yeah. And that would also uh, reinforce the connection between the top and the top top. So Brian, I literally just rested my hands on my desk like I normally do, and then I used a pencil to make marks, <laughs> and I measured between the marks, and it's about 35 inches. So, so if, I had, if I had 35 inches, I'd probably be good, but I'm, I might feel a little bit... Claustrophobic in there? I might, but you don't have to build a desk for me. You have to build a desk for somebody else. If you built a desk for me, you'd go to the Hobbit workshop. Yeah, someone like me, a smaller person, would be more comfortable. Yeah. Hmm. And I guess if, if my hands fit under, I wouldn't feel blocked. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be hitting them. Because, well, let me look at that. How much space is that? 
Oh, in between them, there's yeah, two inches, yeah. right? So let's see, the four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Wait a minute, it's three inches per square. That's right. Yes. Yeah, every every square is three inches. Twenty-three, twenty-six, twenty-nine. Yeah, that's the only thing I would be concerned about. Is I would, I would probably take a piece of cardboard. And prototype the top and get the size right first, and then adjust everything based on that. But I mean, the lower table is the more important. Yeah. Depth and width dimensions. Yep. Yeah. I like it though. And then you would leave it open. You wouldn't do a panel on the front or anything. I like the openness of it. I think that. Uh, it's going to kind of make people think, how is that connected? How is that, uh, how is that working? Yeah. And that, that's what I really like about furniture is when you look at something and you have no idea how it's, you know, how did they do that? Yeah. Did you consider suspending the top? Oh, sorry, did you consider suspending the lower top? Down. From the top top? I did. Okay. But I like I liked the idea of just keeping that kind of just open space between the two and not connecting them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like, do like that. Model I like this that too. Interesting because when you look at it from the side, you see straights and curves, but when you look at it from the front, you see different straights and curves. And so, and if you saw it from any other angle than a perfect side on or front on, it's going to look like angles in every direction. Yeah, right? curvy. Yeah. Something is going to look great. Mm -hmm. You'll see eight different curves. Correct. <laughs> Brian, on a scale of 1 to 10, how hard would you rate this build? I don't know. It's, you, just, you just take it one, one thing at a time. You build the yeah. whole outside structure, and then you... You build the top for the lower section, and then you just start connecting it. It's only four. It's eight legs. Yeah. A couple not, stretchers. Not a lot of components. No, and uh, if you just, you just break it down step by step and mm -hmm. overbuild everything, and you have plenty of room to yeah you know, use the shoulder plane to cut back your joints and yeah. I, I get the feeling this wouldn't be a wouldn't be a one of the projects that you'd shake. It'd be a lot of uh, cut a component, hold it in place, mark it, cut it by hand, and fit it by hand. Yeah. And just go back and forth, back and forth, back and yeah, forth. Yeah, one part at a time. Yeah. Um, I think I'd give this maybe an 8 out of 10 on difficulty. Because if you think about it, I'm, I was trying to make, you got you got the four legs, so there's one, there's one jig you have to make for bent laminations, and then you've got yes, that's right. your front and back stretchers, there's another jig. Your side stretchers, there's another jig. So you're looking at three, three of them. You might be able to get the curves from the inner table out of one of those jigs yeah. because they're all the same. Those the inner the inner table okay. has the same curve on all four legs, just in different directions. Okay. So you're looking at three or four different right. jigs, mm -hmm. which doesn't take that long to make out of MDF. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Looking at the back legs for the inner table, did you forget to draw a curve on the side view? It looks like the it looks like they're straight. You might be looking at it backwards like I was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at that, uh, the side view, mm -hmm. the front of the desk is on the right. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. Yes, 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 yes. Gotcha. Yes, it all makes sense now. I still okay. haven't gotten a leg. I'm gonna put a note. I'm gonna put a note on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean this. This is something I would probably just draw full scale and then yeah. trace the components onto MDF, cut them out, make the templates, and just go from there. Once I had that that initial table built, the big, the large table built. I wouldn't be doing anything off drawings. Everything would just go off of uh, relative dimensioning and just fit it in between. Yeah. And whatever looks right at that point is right. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, if some if a designer came to you and said, "Make this table for me," then you'd have to be going off drawings left and right. But 
if you're just building free form stuff, you can you just wing it. Whatever looks right looks right. You know, you make it work. Mm -hmm. Wow, quite the project. So uh, next up with the design is Jay Bates. Um, on Twitter, he's at jbates86, and uh, I was talking to him earlier today. I'll send him the designs, and uh, hopefully we'll get him on next week to talk about what he's done to the table. Um, any other questions for Brian before we move on to Justin? I'm looking. What's so Jeremy Justin? saying here? Uh, looking at the top view, I almost want to make the smaller piece higher. <laughs> and oh, okay. Back. Um, I'm not sure I understand what he's saying there. Now, if you yeah, if you put it to the back, then it's underneath, which could work as well. You could you could slide your your books underneath the back there, I guess. Um, small piece higher. Okay, so he wants less of a of a distance between the top and the bottom. Or he's saying that the the, the inner table should be higher than the the outer table. Mm -hmm. Which would work as well, but then you're not you're not being able to utilize the back side of the desk because it would be a drop off yeah. to get to that back end. And my thought process was that whole outer perimeter on the higher section, like the computer I work off off right now is just like a it's like a flat screen monitor. There's no you know there's no terminal or anything like that. It's just the monitor is the computer. So you could just put that up there. I could put my phone or whatever else up on the side sections and then my drafting materials and writing materials on the lower section. Mm -hmm. All right, are we going to move on to the Rubo now? Yeah. Um, just want to make one last note here. Um, if you, The whole idea of this uh, challenge is to kind of get you to think about what you would change and how you would change it and kind of hone in on what you like and what you don't like. And um, comments like Jeremy's there, where he would like to see the see the small the small piece higher and towards the back a little bit. He's going to get a chance to redesign the table his way. Um, he's another couple months away, so it might look very different at that time. But um, if you want to get on you know the action, let us know. You can catch us on on Twitter or send us an email or drop us uh, just a comment on on my website at uh, flarewoodworks.com on the telephone game page and we'll sign you up. The next available slot is uh, September 25th. Okay, now take it away. Can I say something else here? I think uh, part of the thing with design that people should start trying to do, even with their own designs, is stop worrying about how you're going to build it and just, just draw something that you think looks good and you can figure out how you're going to build it after the fact. I mean, there's so many people here on Twitter or Facebook or wherever that can help you and say, do this, do that, and you can tweak the design a hundred yeah. times and yeah. come up with something. I mean, that cantilever coffee table that we did, I was talking about that on Twitter for probably six months with different people working out that design, and it wasn't didn't look like it did when it started, but it, the basic concept came through in the end, and I don't know. I like to see people push themselves with their designs and, you know, don't be afraid to, yeah. you know, to make something. So I have a smart-ass comment, then. The reason you changed the top was because it was so hard to build. Well, but we already had the solution for it. We were going to build the router yeah. sled. That's right. We were going to do the Figured router. It out. I thought we were going to cast it. <laughs> I thought we were going to make it out of styrofoam. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, see, yeah, we tried that. Didn't didn't work so well. All right, let's move on. Ooh. Well, I, we got to do one thing before we move on here. Yeah. You see, you see what I see, Matt? The picture. Yes. Yeah. So, Jeremy Morgan, the whiz that he is, I don't know how he did it. He threw together a sketch. It's sideways for me, but um, you have to turn your head sideways here. Do a little bit of this here. Um, this is what he's thinking. He wants the little top. Be higher, so he's actually put it through the through the lower top, which or I don't know, the lower through the top top, and I don't know, you to turn your head a bit, but that's a pretty pretty neat idea, and kind of turns the whole table on its head almost. Okay, so the Ooh. lower section would still be at the front; it wouldn't be it wouldn't go to the back of the table. Mm -hmm. 
I like that. Yeah. Well, that's a for a little bit down the road. So, okay. Nice let's, drawing, uh, by the way. That's that's pretty quick. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, can't wait to see what he does um, when he's got a week to draw. Hey, um, who was it uh, a few weeks ago we had on who their job is doing SketchUp stuff? Oh, I can't oh. remember. It was um, one of the early people that, that did this. Uh, Greg Palmer? Yes. Yeah. Greg, if you're watching, contact me. I need to figure out what's going on. Okay. So let's move on here. So, um, Justin, why don't you give us an introduction to this uh, this seven post uh, series that you did on your blog and what it's all about? Yeah, so I don't know how many people remember. Uh, it was back in uh, March when uh, uh, Jamil posted on Benchcrafted about this uh, project. Um, at first, when I saw it, um, I thought, wow, man, that would be really cool. I really need a bench, and that would be great. But, yeah, maybe not this year. But then I read more into the history of it, and I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a, a huge uh, Rubo enthusiast, uh, um, but I am a big history, you know, kind of, I really like history stuff. And the history is what really kind of got me hooked in this whole project. Um, and I don't know, wh how, you know, what people have read about it or, uh, you know, whatever else. But uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So, I mean, the, the, the long story short is basically, um, you know, over 200, 230 years ago or so, um, you know, the, these it, where it's believed that these uh, American white oak trees were sent to Mary Antoinette by Thomas Jefferson himself, and they were planted near the planet, uh, Palace of Versailles and the uh, Forest of Burgundy um, as sort of a uh, uh, a gift of uh, you know strength between of, of the friendship between France and, and, and America at the time, and uh, Marie Antoinette was known to be a, you know she loved trees and one of her prized possession was these you know two old poplar trees from Virginia so uh, Thomas Jefferson thought that would be a good idea to uh, send these trees over, um, so they planted them and you know they grew for a long 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 time and. In '99, um, there was a big storm that went through Europe and just tore down thousands and thousands and thousands of trees. Um, and someone had the, uh, I don't know, the smartness or the intuity or whatever to, you know, basically slice these trees up in, into big slabs and, and not cut it into um, smaller pieces for whatever reason. I don't know why, but. Uh, they did, and fast forward, Bo Childs, the guy who owns the uh, you know, the facility we were at, he uh, spends a lot of time over there procuring wood and antiques and all kinds of stuff for his business, and uh, he came across this wood, and you know heard a little bit of that about the history of it and was very you know, interested uh, in that, so he got some and, and brought it home, and we're talking slabs that are, you know. 30 inches wide by 6 inches thick by 20 feet long. I mean, not many people have the resources to pull mm -hmm. slabs like that, you know, across the pond, but um, he does, and uh, we're grateful because uh, we got all these nice benches out of him, but, um, but it was just a, a fantastic um, experience, not only for the fact that I've got, you know, a really cool bench out of it, uh, but the history is, you know, you know, pretty cool to me. Uh, I like it a lot uh, to think about, you know, what these trees have seen and been through. I mean, and it's also uh, something else, too, that um, it's, it's believed that these trees came from acorns that fell from trees that Thomas Jefferson had on his grounds at Monticello. Wow. So, <laughs> I mean, That's it, it, awesome. it's, yeah, the, the whole thing is really, really, really cool. But um, 
so yeah, it was a it was a long hard week, and we had a lot of uh, it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of sweat. Uh, <laughs> yep. But uh, I got a nine foot, uh, five hundred pound solid oak bench out of the whole deal. So, and a great story to tell. So. Um, <laughs> Who was running That's an the amazing class? Bit of history. Who was running the classes there? Um, technically, it wasn't a class. It was just a uh, group build. We were all building benches. Um, Jamil and Jamil is basically um, Jamil Abrams from um, Bench, uh, Benchcrafted. He was basically um, organizing the entire event. Um, Bo Childs owns the grounds that we were on. And then there were several other, I call them project leaders, um, who were involved. So there's Chris Schwartz and Jeff Miller and Rainey Nelson and uh, John Fiant and Don Williams. Uh, and I know I'm forgetting somebody, but some pretty big names. Uh, and they were all just fantastic to hang out with all week and work with and, and you know, get advice mm -hmm. from. And, and the rest of us were just mostly, you know, hobbyists and uh, amateurs. Were you guys working off a set of plans, or did you have a... Uh, yeah, we were working off of uh, Plate 11 Rubo. from A.J. Rubo's book. Yeah. All right. So it's built uh, pretty much... I, don't, I can show you... Um, I don't know if I can share my screen now. I can show you a few pictures I've got of uh, current... Uh, I guess maybe not. So, Justin, was it a week-long build? Yeah, so we all got down there um, Sunday night just to kind of do a, a, a meet and greet and kind of go over the um, logistics of how the week was going to work out. Um, and uh, we all pretty much um, wrapped it up Friday. A, lot, uh, several people, a couple people left a little early uh, Thursday evening and early Friday morning, but for the most part, most of us there were there were there through Friday night. Wow. Do you know how difficult it was knowing that you guys were there, like just three, four hours away from me? <laughs> <laughs> so bad, like wanted to get in the car and just come check it out. Well, you know, I mean, I, 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 in hindsight, I wish I had known because there were several people who just showed up for the day or so just to kind of hang out mm. and you know and yeah. kind of learn and talk it and this and that, but. Uh, I, if I could have that week, I would have. It was, <laughs> it was not a good week. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, it's something I'll never forget. It was an experience of a lifetime, in my opinion. Is your bench finished? It's not. I wouldn't call it finished. It's functional. It is assembled. Uh, everything works. Uh, I, don't, I need to flatten the top again. I need to install a planing stop. Uh, and a few other minor details, but it is functional. If I wanted to, I could build something right now, and I probably will here by the weekend. So. Do you get, are you going to finish it with anything? I'm on the fence. I uh, haven't decided yet. Um, Ammonia? Huh? Ammonia? That's <laughs> <laughs> a real nice flake. Too. I wish I could. I wish I could show you how what it, it looks like now. But um, oh wait, maybe here. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see. I can see some thumbnails there. Can you see it? We can see the can thumbnails. You see thumbnails. You need to make sure you're screen sharing the actual um, photo viewer that shows the pictures. We just see the little ones. Yeah. If you haven't had a chance to do a group build before um, or a class, it's it's quite the experience. It's very different from working solo in a shop or even alone in a shop with with uh, support by um, forums or the internet. Just that community feeling and even being able to ask someone to help help you with a glue up or something. It's 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 really it's it's a fun, it's more fun, I think more enjoyable to be working with someone in your shop. It is. <clears throat> Until they borrow your good tools and don't bring them back. <laughs> Do any of you guys work with anyone else? 
I have. I, do, I did two projects with a buddy um, from work, and it was really nice to, you know, have somebody in there, especially for catching stuff coming off the back of the table saw, doing big glue-ups, or just running ideas by. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was... Yeah. I wouldn't really call him a word worker. He was there to he was there to learn, um, but even that was even that was wonderful. And I bet that if I had another woodworker, it would just it would it would be awesome. It would be it could be awesome. Wow! That's so we see some pictures over here. So yeah, that's the that's kind of the current status of my bench. I have the. Uh, wow. Front chop rounded over now, which is not you know represented in this picture, but, um, but yeah, it's all put together and drawboard and glued up and. Um, that's a nice space you have too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So that's just two pieces. It looks like. No, it's actually one piece. It's just uh, got a real big check on the on the on the uh, end down there, which. That's one piece of wood. It's like right yeah. in the middle. Wow. One slab of wood. And did you uh, run that through? A, did they have a planer big enough to fit that? Strato planer. Yeah, yeah. You need to you check out sure the block. It. There's a strato planer. It, pl it joints and planes both sides at the same time. What? So it's it's a it's a two head mold or something like yeah. It's an Oliver, um, right? Yeah. Here's a picture coming up here. Hang on. Yeah. Hold on. Chris is getting yeah. a picture of it. There we go. It's a monster. Uh, what does that thing run on? <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, a beast. Flux capacitor or something. <laughs> 36 inches wide. I mean, it was pretty phenomenal to see. I mean, especially when we took Bo's bench when it's 16 feet long. It literally took 10 <laughs> of us to pick it up and yeah. put it and defeat it in this machine. But, you know, to see the 16-foot-long bench go in one side as a rough slab and come out the other end, you know, jointed and planed. <laughs> and it was just fantastic. Yeah, Matt, it runs on the souls of pagan children. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering, yeah. <laughs> it runs on stem cells. Yeah. yeah. When you uh, have to do woodworking with forklifts, that's always a good time. That's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure I want to get to that scale. <laughs> How are you going to reflatten yours? You said you had to reflatten it. Are you hand planing it? Yeah, router sled? I've, since I've gotten to home, it's it's moved a little bit. It's not exactly uh, uh, as flat as it was, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just going to hit it with a joiner plane and it'll take my time. And I, I probably won't do that just yet. I'll probably wait till it gets closer to uh, winter or it starts drying out a little bit, uh, just so I don't have to do it again then. You know, because I'll do it now and then have to do it again then, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably just wait for it to uh, – because this stuff is – I mean, it's been air drying since 1999 when it was cut down. But when we were working with it, it was still pretty wet. Yeah. You, yeah. you could feel like uh, when we had to cut the big holes for the uh, chops, we, the yeah. shavings that were coming out of the Forstner, uh, you know, the hole for the Forstner bit it was making – you could feel, you could pick up the shaving and just feel the moisture in it. Wow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, th these things are going to move quite a bit. So, And the picture I've got up now, I, Chris Schwartz suggested that I do this, they called it a dog bone. Yeah. I was going to say, that, doesn't, that looks nothing like a butterfly. Yeah. Well, this is on the <laughs> bottom side of the bench, so you obviously, you know, you won't yeah. see it from the top, but it's just kind of helped stabilize that check so it doesn't open up yeah. even more because... Now, By the time I had brought it home, it had already opened up about a sixteen to a thirty thirty mm -hmm. seconds of an inch. So, wow. yeah. is the rudder plane for scale, or did you use it in that operation? Say again. Is the rudder plane for scale, or was it part of that operation? Uh, I used it to create that uh, that route. So yeah, it's. Okay. I mean, I guess you could use it for scale, and I also use it for the operation. Okay. The, the channel doesn't really need to be that wide, I guess, because the bolt's not that wide. But, yeah. you know, I only have one blade for the router plane, and it was that uh, wide, so it's all wide. I made it. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah. Cool. But I've actually put two of these dog bones in um, along the crack, and I'm 
now that I've got it all assembled and flipped over, I'm going to butterfly the top as well, just to kind of help stabilize it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Justin, with a bench that big, you know, you, you need a big jointer to flat. <laughs> <it. laughs> That's just right. Saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sure do. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, had a conversation with Scott. I actually got a, a nice uh, big 14-inch um, long section of wood that I had to cut off of the bench top because of this check. And I'm thinking about making some uh, hand tools out of that cutoff, so mm -hmm. to kind of match the the bench. Yeah, That'll sorry, I nice. emailed you back today about that. But oh, it's okay. Kind of crazy. Did did uh. Jamil or Chris Schwartz, did they talk about doing something like this again? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, you know, kind of mentioned more it of the there, but <laughs> I, I mean, it's kind of hard to... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not talking like the same wood, but I'm talking like a group build where they're, yeah. where, they're bringing yeah. in, where they're bringing in some history into what everyone's building like this. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing is that, I mean, Bo... Um, was so excited to have everybody down there. I, I get the feeling like, you know, he just, he, he really likes to have, you know, big groups of like that work at his place. So, I mean, I would not be surprised if um, they do do something like that again. Um, but like you mentioned, it'd be kind of hard to find wood again of this historical, you know, importance. But, yeah, um, but yeah I mean, I, it, there, was a, there was a couple mentions like it might happen again. You know, I, I don't mm. know how how soon it would happen, but it was fantastic. It was just yeah. His shop is set up perfectly to build benches like this. It's just, yeah. It was fantastic. I'm, I'm looking at all the all the machinery in here. There's the plane there. There's a bandsaw, a milling machine. Um, what was your favorite machine to use? And the, the giant circular saw. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Um, is there a picture of that anywhere? Yeah. Um, how big is this saw? I've got a picture of it here. It was, it was large. It was probably the blade was at least four. I would say at least twelve to fourteen inches in diameter. I mean, yeah, it's a handheld a, circular saw. Yeah. What's, oh, what's like one of the on? big beam cutting circular saws. Yeah. If you just got a sixteen-inch one. It's on Jamil's uh, blog. Isn't it? I don't know. I saw uh, it here Trump. somewhere. I'm looking uh, for it. I lost the picture. I don't know which. Post. Oh, it's on the second one. No, was it? I don't know. It was in the first post. I don't know. We'll all turn around. How many people were in this class again? Or in this group uh, build? We, we built 16 benches. Uh, there were a couple people there who were just kind of hanging out and helping and not uh, building a bench. Um, but we built 16 benches, including the the big one. Okay. Um, so there's quite a few people. I'm gonna pull up there to do another one here. Here's a picture of the the circuit I saw. My goodness. I was looking at one one the other day actually, just yesterday. Yeah. So my understanding is that this guy had a like a shipping container full of this wood or multiple shipping containers full of this wood. Yeah, the guy, he's got, uh, I mean, buildings just full of wood. I mean, he's got... What is his, uh, what's he normally do? He does a lot of, um, he does custom, some custom cabinetry and furniture. He does um, a lot of custom um, flooring. Okay. Um, he does. Uh, he deals in a lot of uh, antiques. He's got a house on the property that um, nobody lives in. It's just full of antique furniture that he, you know, sells and on you know, this and that. And um, but I mean, he's got it. He's got his hands in a lot of different pies, as far as I understand. As far as you know, different things that he does. Um, but I think the majority of what what he what they do is. Uh, custom flooring and stuff like that. I just saw this picture on uh, Jamil's blog and it's black and white which makes us, it shows off the grain and this oak. Yes. That is, that is stunning. That is stunning. Yeah, there's some really pretty uh, wood in some of these benches. That is so cool. 
one guy who was working right behind me, his name is Brad. His entire bench. This is a good. This is a funny story and also a sad story. And one entire surface of his bench had just tons of the white oak Ray Fleck. You know the cornerstone oh. Ray Fleck, and it yeah. was gorgeous. The sad part is, is that because of the way the the rings are orientated, you had to put that side down. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I know it was so sad. That 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 one. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That'll be a treat for the woodworker, though, who always wants to look at the bottom side of the benches and the tables. Yeah. Oh yeah, check that picture out. Right, that that's pretty cool. So that's a uh, lead shot lead that they shot. found, and they counted okay. the ring, and they they figured huh. it was around Napoleon's time. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> awesome! Yeah, I mean, this is been. I mean. I mean, the history of this alone is just so cool. Yeah, yeah, wow. Peter Ross made all the uh, iron work uh, for. We've got all got uh, planing stops there and hold fasts. Mm. Uh, he, he turned the. Uh, he made the uh, cranks that go through the wood screws on the vise and the ferrules mm. on those. Mm -hmm. All hand forged. It's fantastic stuff. Peter Peter Ross is amazing. He, oh, stuff. And these things are, I mean, they look like just normal hold, hold fast, but they are enormous. They're the at the very top where, um, you, uh, you know, at the top of the hold fast where you. Uh, oh my goodness! The that. bench. I mean, it's over an inch in diameter, so you can't draw. You can't drill a three-quarter inch hole in your bench for that hold fast to work. You have to drill an inch. Or an inch and the eighth hole for it to work. I mean, wow. there's enormous hole fast. How do, how do you drill the holes? Uh, we I have not drilled any of mine yet. We drilled one in Bo's bench, and we just used a big. Um, uh, I think it's called an owl bit. It's just basically a big auger bit with a screw lead on it. Okay. And uh, just kind of stood up on top of it. And <laughs> auger. Yep. Yeah, or bracing bit. Yeah, I've done I've done that once before, and that's wow. enough. <laughs> uh, I put a three-quarter inch hole through a 16 piece of hard maple, and that was enough fun. Oh, geez, that's a lot of work. Yeah. How fun was the Tanowitz? <laughs> the what? Yeah, the Tanowitz bandsaw. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't think that I don't think that's the one that uh, was by me. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, but the bandsaw we used was really cool. But it was kind of really. Finicky, it, it, you know, the blade jumped off the wheels a couple times. Oh, yeah. it's, that's broke right. once. And uh, is this yeah, Bo's cool. bench here? Yeah, board? that's Bo's bench upside down. God, it's freaking huge. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another bandsaw here in my picture, my screen. Oh yeah, that's the big one. Wow. Yeah, that's the one that was near me. Yeah, we you know it's quite the shock when he when he says, "I don't think that's the giant bandsaw that was near me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but, I mean, when it fired up, you you knew what was going on. It was so loud. Yeah. But it took yeah. it took anywhere from five to ten minutes for it to stop running after you oh, shut yeah. it off. To uh, uh, no electronic break on those babies. No. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't didn't the blade break on somebody or something? Like or on uh, rainy. Yeah, the blade broke, and that was very scary. But I mean, there were sparks flying and everything else. But yeah. when there was the, when the blade was was broken, and there's no longer any tension on the wheels, then the wheels spun freely for a half an hour. I mean, it took forever for the wheels to stop on that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Sitting on the thing. Look at that. Oh, we were all sitting on that. I mean, you could you could put three full-grown adults on one end of that thing, and it would not tip. It would not tip. The top alone, we figure, is about 800, 900 pounds. That's cool. Did you guys all sign each other's benches? Yeah, everybody who was still there. So Thursday, I kind of had an idea that I wouldn't get mine done unless I really, really rushed it, and I didn't really want to rush it. Um, yeah. So I just kind of took my time, and by the time um, you know lunchtime came around on Friday, I kind of packed all my stuff up, and then we, several of us, just kind of really focused um, solely on Bo's bench because 
I mean, you can't, uh, like, leave there and not see a 16-foot bench <laughs> assembled, you know. So we yeah, all yeah. chipped in and, and finished the, 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 the final details on his bench. Yeah. And uh, whoever was left, a few people, a few people had already gone home, but um, whoever was left signed the bottom of his bench. Yeah, I got a picture of that here off, off of the blog here. So there's the, the finished bench up top there. Yep. And uh, the signatures on the bottom there. Yeah, that's French me. All Ubo, Ubo Project 2013. I just want to point out on Bo's bench the size of the legs. Yeah, it's hard to fathom because they're so fat it makes actually the entire bench look look proportionally Narrow. smaller. Right. But then mm -hmm. you look at Bo at the end there, yeah. and you realize that leg is twice the thickness of his leg. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think six, I need some of that. It's a six by eight piece of, of oak. I think I need oh. some of that wood to build my uh, my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I think those oh. uh, rails are three by six as well, three inches by six inches. Oh yeah. Hmm. I need somebody to send me a, a long, uh, a long length of that oak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The longest I got is fourteen inches. Yeah. Cool. Justin, have you worked with oak or white oak before, or much in the past? Uh, just a little, little bit. Not really that much okay. at all. Did, the, did, um, this, did this stuff seem special in the way it worked? Was it a lot harder, or could you tell? Oh, it worked. It worked fantastic. It, I mean, mm. with the hand planes and the chisels, it just, I mean, it, it really was very a pleasant experience working with it. It wasn't too tough, and, you know, you can get... I wonder if that's things. partly due to how wet it stalls. It could be, yeah. But it was fantastic, because, I mean... You know, after, you know, Tuesday, got halfway through Tuesday, then we basically all started working on, you know, squaring up the edges and everything else, and most of us, you know, used hand tools to do that, and it was really quite a pleasure. I mean, it was 90 degrees, so I was sweating like a stuck pig, but, I mean, other than yeah. that, it was it was a pleasure to, to use hand tools yeah. on. It was... Hmm. I'm a fan of the end of that, being left, uh, left raw like that. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Too, the end of the end of Bo's bench here. The raw yeah. Edge. Um, being left uh, left raw. Oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, several yeah. people um, squared theirs up and smoothed them out. I, mine is still in the rough form. I I'm okay. undecided whether or not I'm going to square mine up or not. Mm -hmm. I don't intend to do a tail vise so right now. I don't see any need to square it up. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, with the tail vise on that bench, you could clamp 16-foot boards on there. No problem. <laughs> yeah, and that's why, I mean, the, re the reason why he did a 16-foot bench isn't to, you know, build a huge bench, but he actually, they do you know, custom flooring and hand scraped flooring, mm -hmm. so they want they wanted to have uh, a big enough surface for at least two mm -hmm. people to do some hand scraped flooring in, in mm -hmm. long lengths. So it, it does serve a purpose. Yeah. I'd be curious to see how much flex there is in the bench if you put if you stand in the middle. I put my uh, large it exterior yeah. up there and it didn't flex at all. I think so. Yeah. It didn't. Not not it enough that you'd feel it. No, no. Well, Somebody put a, a a ruler up next to it and I got up on oh, yeah. top of it. It didn't. It didn't flex. Didn't. <laughs> I jumped up and down and it said it kind of did a little bit, but then it sprung yeah. right back to the the original. Wow. Now, when we're in 50 years, we're gonna we're gonna have to all go back and, and take a uh, take a laser level and see if it's still flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> see if it's sagged under its own weight. So, Scott, are you gonna build him a custom plane to flatten that to fall for it long? Yeah. Well, like I said, he's he's only got a 14 inch uh, long piece left, so. Yeah. Um, well. But yeah, we'll, we're gonna we'll do something. Figure something out. Uh, so anybody else that was there and has um, some longer pieces? Let's go. No, call me. Yeah. So right just now, I'm you you would you'd totally recommend that experience. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I uh, yeah, I mean, it was 
I mean, if you take any sort of classes or anything together, it, it's a cool thing to kind of just hang out with, you know, other woodworkers for a week. But, um, but yeah, something like this is just. I, I, I would I would re recommend if you if you do something like this, kind of, and, and if it's in Georgia, do it towards the winter. <laughs> the year. But other than that, yeah, man, it was just it was a fantastic experience. Did you guys wake up and go to work and then go to bed, or did you? Have some downtime, just to ha some hangout time, or yeah, we started every day about um, eight o'clock. Um, I was actually staying in a little uh, bed and breakfast in the, in Barnesville there, so I was about ten minutes away. But uh, I would get up, have breakfast at the bed and breakfast, and then go straight to work. And um, mm -hmm. we would work until, depending on the day, um, but um, we would work until five or six o'clock. Um, Two or three nights, we uh, had uh, a dinner set up. One night, we went to uh, Ron Breeze's house for dinner. He, he, made, he they made supper for us, and I got to go check out his shop and uh, you know kind of hang out and drink a couple beers. And um, one night, we, good people. yeah, Ron's a good guy. Um, when uh, the the Thursday night, um, Bo put on a little uh, farewell. You know, dinner party thing, whatever, with some barbecue, and that was really great. Um, one night we all went out um, together, just at a you know hang out. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty much full you know immersion in woodworking for yeah, the yeah. whole week. So, and I actually uh, you know uh, had a roommate uh, in the bed and breakfast with uh, Christian Coda. Uh, uh, so we got to talk, you know, a lot, you know, about stuff. Just, you know, so it was it was a full week, just full immersion. That that sounds a lot like uh, woodworking in America. Yeah, but with actual woodworking. Yes, <laughs> yeah, not, we need just, that. not just uh, classes and yeah. come up to the bench for two minutes before your next class. How you cool would it be to get a green build? Build. Hey, yeah. if somebody wants to work at a bench the whole time at Woodworking in America this year, you're <laughs> more than welcome to come hang out in my, in my booth and play with my planes the whole time and help me sell them. There you go. I, I won't even charge you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all for free. Maybe, Matt, we'll have to work on that. We've got, we've got this telephone design game. Maybe we can get something where... We get a collaborative, I don't know. Oh, no, that's... Sometime down idea. the road. That's a great idea. Like, um, have a sketchbook, right? And and yep. and you do a sketch on the last page. Yeah. Okay? And then you turn the page, and somebody comes up and does a sketch on the second to last page, and the next one, and the next one. Yeah. Somebody was talking about a Pictionary. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Jeremy. Talking about a, a Pictionary telephone game, where that's exactly how you do it. So you start on the left page, and then someone looks at the right page, and then they turn the page, and then it keeps going on, and then in the end you have something very different. So um, that'd be that'd be kind of fun to do. Yeah, it'd have to go at a fairly quick pace, so to get. You know, but well, I, I it's settled. You guys projects. are you guys are going to have to be at Woodworking America and do that. Well, yeah, we got to figure that out. This year, maybe next year. I don't know. Who knows? Justin, are you, not, not will you be enough. at Woodworking America? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I will. I'll be there. Uh, I've been. This is my third year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Did, did, did I meet you two years ago? Uh, maybe. Not sure. <laughs> I, I was in. Um, when you're when you're working though, Chris, you never remember anything. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. When I first started Brian? going, though, I didn't really know too many people or faces or names or anything else. So I might have met you and yeah. been like, okay, he was a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, you got to volunteer. Um, I have a volunteer. Yeah, David, drunken woodworker, wants to come and play with your planes and help sell them all day at wood at Woodworking America. Excellent. Anytime. And it's in writing. I'll hold him to that. <laughs> Brian, do you have any plans to go to woodworking in America this year? No, no plans. Not gonna happen. Eh? Yeah. Not gonna, not gonna happen. I was yeah. planning on uh, taking a class with uh, Chuck Bender 
yep. this year. That kind of got put on hold because of the yeah. whole baby thing, and uh, and Chuck moved to Cincinnati, so it's on hold for a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Babies and moves, they run everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well. How are we doing for time, Matt? Are we, we are way, we over, way over. I was just uh, telling yeah. the wife that we were way over time. Yeah. So let's wrap it up. Um, Anything so else to add, anybody? Yeah, let me check to see. Oh, yeah, it's just Drunken Woodworker saying he wants to be a salesman for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Chris, tell us what's up for next week. It's Jay Bates, right? Jay Bates, yes. He is taking Brian's design, and he's going to do his magic to it. Um from what I, from what I've seen, he's quite the SketchUp pro. So maybe Scott, maybe he'll bail you out there if you can't get that design together. <laughs> I um, have an idea. I'm gonna pursue. Okay. But yeah, by all means. So if he gets it. hopefully we'll get Jay on the show next week. And I think that's all we have lined up at the moment. Is that, is that right, Matt? I think so. Um. But hey, you know, Justin, you're welcome to come back and show us more of this thing that I covet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I wish I had a uh, camera in the shop that could show you, but uh, yeah. maybe we'll, we'll figure something out next time or whatever. You could snap some pictures and share them with us next week, maybe. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, sure. Hold on one second. I'll be right there. All right, guys, I actually got to run. Okay, Brian. Well, we appreciate having we appreciate you joining us joining us on the show and playing a little game here. Hope you had fun. Definitely, definitely. Thanks for having me, guys. Congratulations on your on yeah, being you. a father. Congrats. We'll, we'll yeah, catch you later. Thanks All right, again, guys. So that's Wood Chat for July thirty first, twenty thirteen. We do this every Wednesday at seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern. Um, and so we'll be doing it next Wednesday as well. Um, you can follow the chats on uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom or on Twitter with hashtag woodchat. Although we're ending the broadcast, woodchat goes 24-7 over on Twitter with hashtag woodchat. So if you have a question or want to share a design, go ahead and do that um, on Twitter with hashtag woodchat. Um, next week we have Jay Bates for the his next step in the telephone design game challenge for the table that Brian uh, removed all the cool curves from. Uh, so thanks everybody for watching. We hope you had a good time, and we will see you next week. Everybody at once says goodbye. Good goodbye. Night. Goodbye. 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 Hey Justin. Yep. Um. Good. <laughs>